Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Now, what I thought I would do is something a little bit different. So there might be a little bit of background sound and changes of kind of uh, sound, I guess, as I do this. I'm going to give you, I'm going to take you back five years. That's it. I'm going to, I've got a time machine. It's in my voice. I'm going to take you back. No, I'm going to take you back five years into my life when I first saw this flat, my home that I'm living in now. So I'm even gonna take you outside and describe what I saw when I first moved in. So if you like what I do, leave a review. Um, and if you want to, if you'd like to help support with the running costs of this free service, you can go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. The link's on my website. So here we go. I'm just going to um, take you through this. So as I said, there's going to be a few sounds different from normal. So here we go. I'm taking you outside the flat. So I'm going to take you downstairs. Okay, it's very weird, very weird thing that I'm doing. But there you go, so I'm going to do it. I won't go outside because it's cold and raining. So I walk through the door. I phone the lady. Or I think, yeah, to see, because she, well, she might have phoned me because I was waiting outside. And she said, I'm upstairs. So I come upstairs. Brown banister on the right. Black banister thing, metal thing on the left. So I'm walking up the stairs. How many steps is there? One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen steps. Big window in front of me in the hallway, which leads looks out to the garden. I turn left, and the big black banister goes all the way along the left hand side. And there's another big window looking out onto the road. And the banister goes all the way to the wall outside my door. (sighs) So I'm looking at this place. There's an old electric alarm thing above the wall, or above the door. For some reason, it doesn't work anymore. And I knock on the door, she opens the door. In fact, I think she was standing outside. She says, come in, Jason. And I came in. So this is the first time I'm standing in my new home. See, at the time I didn't know it was gonna be my new home. So I'm looking at it. There's no lights at all in the building, in the, in the place, no lights. But fortunately it's quite, um, it was a bright day, it was April, but it was quite dull. In fact, if I turn the light off, even during the summer, it's dark in the hallway because there's no light. 
coming into the hallway like where the front door is there's no carpet on the floor anywhere there's loads of paint splatter you know from how many years worth of paint I, hope, I think it was paint there's these white splatter bits all over the floor in here the bedroom bathroom well no not the bathroom in the living room so I'm looking around and I'm thinking okay a bit of a weird angle so as soon as you walk in you face a door so you have to kind of go around not around the door because that would be weird but you know follow the hallway round and the gaps between the walls basically and you can see straight ahead there's the kitchen you might be able to hear the fridge from here but there was no fridge at the time um, but what she did to start with she said well look at this I said what I got a bit worried then and she, she opened the door that's right in front of the right in front of the uh, front door as you go in and this is big storage room now it's got stuff in it so it doesn't look as big as what it did but it's an L shape and if it was long it would be big enough to have a, a single bed it would be big enough to ha have as a bedroom beating the window in a bedroom really but you know if, if you were hard pressed you could sleep in it and I thought wow that's a big storage room and she said yeah it is and she, and she said but can you stop saying wow because it's a I said why she said that's annoying me I said what it's a bit rude she said no it's not really I, I'm in charge I said no you're not no one's in charge of anything she said technically I am in charge of this place I said okay yeah but can we just can you just be nice I said she said well okay then but I've had a bit of a weird weekend I said well what happened I regretted that because she told me I said oh never ask someone <laughs> never ask someone how they are <laughs> I, <l> <laughs> I remember once my dad I'm not going to say the person he asked but he said to this person I think it was my well I will tell you it was, it was my stepmum's mother and he knocked on the door to pick up my little brother he was about eight at the time. So we were living at that place that when I was living in a on a camp bed in their living room. So he knocks on the door, he didn't come in, he just he's waiting for my little brother to come. And he said to her, I said, How are you? She said, Oh, and she reels off this probably at least five minutes of physical complaints that she had. And my dad kept quiet all the way through it. And at the end of it, when she stopped talking, he said, oh, good. And I, I couldn't stop laughing. I don't think he meant it in that way. But it was just so, you know, and I was, I heard him and it's like, I was cracking up laughing. I was only 16 or 15, no, I was 15. But it was just hilarious. Just, just so wrong. He shouldn't have, you know, but anyway. He wasn't saying good that she was suffering. I think he was... They didn't really like each other. So it was kind of small talk, you know? So there you go. Um, well, they might have loved each other. I don't know. They... So... I came out here. It looked a lot different to what it does now. I had a different front door. I had an old door that had probably been on there for the last 20, 30 years. That's now replaced by a brand new door that I got in, I don't know, October time, November, October. I've now got a coat rack, which is on the wall, uh, which wasn't there before. My dad put that up for me, and I've got a, a mirror wall that I can look into. It. it means I can see my reflection, if I ever want to see my reflection. Um, sometimes I do want to see my reflection, sometimes I don't but it's there anyway so when I don't want to see my reflection I just don't look at it 
and then straight ahead again it's carpeted but the carpet's grimy and ripped up at the sides thanks to my little boy Andre it's completely destroyed every carpet in this place and there's a bit of wear and tear as well for me walking in here and uh, my football boots on after because I'm a professional footballer I don't know if you realised so you know the studs on my football boots sometimes dig into the carpet and uh, so yeah that's a problem with being a professional professional athlete you can uh, ruin the carpet so as I look down to the left of me on the wall there's the thermostat for the boiler I suppose you could say well, it's not going to be for the television is it yeah I know but I'm just saying it's for the boiler it's a thermostat I've never had my own thermostat before can you believe that I've never had my own thermostat even when I've had I've had a couple of studio apartments over the years and even then the heating was always controlled by the landlord I didn't have any control over the heat I've lived in rooms that had no heating in never had my own thermostat there's something it's something special it's kind of I now feel like a man <laughs> so as I look down I can see the kitchen with the door open and first on the left there's my bedroom second on the left there's a living room third on the left the doorway that's the bathroom and the door right ahead is the, the kitchen there's a light box there's a light lampshade with a light in it when I first moved in but there was no light because there's no electricity I probably didn't notice that there was a f uh, smoke alarm on the ceiling probably didn't notice that at the time um, but there is I noticed it now but I didn't you know because of it being dark I probably didn't I don't know how often I look up how often do you look up it's kind of I suppose if you're really tall you have to be a bit more aware of the ceiling don't you and like door frames and the height of door frames so you don't bang your head but because I've never really had that problem I generally don't look up I don't mean I never look up I mean I have looked up it's not something I've never done it has occurred at times but when I'm looking at the sky I prefer to do it lying down like in a field, well, maybe not a field, but like on a beach or in a park. Not that I've done that for quite some time. Although, a couple of years ago, I was laying down with Andre at the side of the road near opposite a field under a tree. And it was a really nice day and I just thought I'd lie down with him. And people were stopping to see if I was okay. <laughs> so, if I'd have been in my 20s or, you know, I reckon everyone would have just completely ignored it thinking I was sunbathing. But, you know, seeing me, they probably thought, oh, make sure he hasn't fallen over and hurt his hip. Lovely. So this whole floor was just, um, well, it's concrete. I've got a concrete floor. And there is something on top of the concrete floor that is, is concrete. And so there's no, there wasn't any carpet at all. So she's, the lady says, come on in then, let's get going. <clears throat> or something like that. So I think the first thing she showed me was the bedroom. And she said, come on, have a look at this. And I said, okay bit too excitable for my liking but it's okay you know let's have a look now the thing that I was surprised about was the size because it's a big flat 
you know, in the sense of the rooms are quite big. It's definitely not small rooms. The only small room is, I suppose, the bathroom's always going to be quite small, isn't it? But even then, it's not tiny. I mean, I managed to fall out of the bath and not even hit the side, not even hit any of the walls. I'm not bragging about that. I'm not showing off. I'm just saying it's... <laughs> I don't know. It's probably just bathroom size. I mean, I dated a girl years ago and her bathroom was bigger than my whole flat. I just couldn't believe it. There was a, there was a, a water fountain and everything that you could drink out of. It was amazing. So there was this, I walked in and I was like, okay, I don't know what the measurement is of the wall. I mean, the walls, I mean, it's a high ceiling. So I'm, I've got to be at least six foot three. So the ceiling's probably another half my height, I reckon. So six, it's got to be at least seven, seven plus foot high ceiling probably more maybe eight foot yeah probably eight foot tall high the ceiling and without measuring it I couldn't tell you what the measurement was of the between you know like between the walls but it was empty so everything looks bigger when it's empty doesn't it or not everything I mean some things need to be full of blood before they look bigger but you know I mean generally most things look like the the um, like a balloon off talking about you know if you uh, uh, if you blow a balloon up it looks bigger doesn't it than if it it was deflated. But this room completely empty, no again no carpet, nothing on the wall, no bed of course, no uh, wardrobe, and believe it or not. This might come as a shock to you. There was no garden shed in this room. I was very surprised. <laughs> I thought everyone had a garden shed in their bedroom, but clearly not. And the thing I noticed probably most of all about this room when I walked in was the size of the windows, really big windows. Um, I'd say the windows in length pretty much the same height as I am. If that makes sense, they're like a long ways. The height of the window is about seven, I don't know, about, yeah, about like seven foot. And the window sill starts around my pubic bone area. So it's quite a big window, quite long. There's how many windows? One, two, three, four windows in it. Three that can open, one that doesn't. And then there's the radiator that's even longer than the window. Underneath the window. Because that's always a good idea, isn't it? Put the thing that produces heat underneath the place where heat gets out of. Yeah, that's a good place to put a radiator. So the radiator is underneath the window and it's a long, long radiator. Now if he was here now, um, you wouldn't get the same effect as I got in the sense of the shed. Uh, it, it's from the wall, it comes across and it, it dips into one, probably a quarter of the radiator yeah a quarter of the radiator on one side near the wall yeah probably about that and a quarter of the window but it's not right against the window so it doesn't block the window oops I'm tripping over myself now but at the time there was nothing in here it was just carpetless lots of paint stains on this on the, the floor and lots of tacks not not I mean tic tacks um like bits of metal like um nails or whatever sticking up so 
I wasn't quite sure what that was about. Again, there was a lampshade. So in the middle of the room, it's a, a, it still is, but it's a different lampshade and there was a light bulb. And it was very bright in here. Because there was no curtains, no, no, uh, uh, what's it, the neck curtains either. So it was very bright. So we, it was first thing in the morning, it's about nine o'clock or half nine in the morning. Very bright. The doors, I noticed, were very tatty. Still are. Doors have been here probably, I mean, it looked like this place was built. It was built in the 50s. It looks like the doors were second hand when they actually built the property. That's what the doors look like. Just, oh, we haven't got any doors, so I don't worry. I'll, I've found some in a skip. We'll use them. So that's that. There's a light switch, which is always handy. That's on the right hand side. It's, as you come in the door, it's on the left. That's where the light switch is. And then one raise this side as you join me. And there was no ferret running around either when I moved in here. No ferret. It was also quiet. Very quiet. What are you looking at? What do you want? So I thought, well, that's all right. I was kind of trying to visualize in my mind, because I had a bed, I had a single bed. I thought, where's it gonna go? And the possibilities were, well, they weren't endless, but they were, you know, flexible. And initially, when I moved in, didn't have no carpet or anything like that, but I put my bed in against the wall, which is parallel with the living room, that wall, and had the, the bed coming out. And that was it, that's kind of all I had at the time. And then as I walk out, she said, guess what, there's another room. I said, what, really? She said, yeah. And in the past, I would have been really happy just with this room. The size of it. Admittedly, if I was living in one room, I wouldn't have a shed in there. I probably, yeah. There's not enough. <laughs> there's not enough room to have a shed in a place where you're kind of spending all your time. But it does show that there's enough room for a settee. There's enough room for a TV. So all the kind of the, I mean, technically I could probably stick a, a cooker or, you know, a fridge and stuff in here as well if I kind of needed to and, and sort of set it up really nice, but I don't need to and therefore I, I don't. But it's a nice size. And if I was in one room on my own, I probably wouldn't have got a double bed. So I've got a king size bed in there and it was one of my most expensive purchases. Like really, when I moved in here, uh, three of the most expensive things I've ever purchased in my life up to that point was the bed, which was about 350 pound, the wash machine, which was about 350 pound, the carpet, which was over 600 pound. Those are, and that's, that's without the fridge, freezer, cooker, um, and other bits and bobs, you know, pans, frying pans, cooking pans, cutlery, plates. <laughs> it's like loads of stuff, just because I didn't ha I didn't need any of that stuff. I had one plate, one dish, one spoon, one fork, one knife, and that was it. That's all I had. So I thought, no, I'm not. Don't need to live like that anymore. So I got loads and so I've got loads of washing up to do so there was pretty much no there was nothing in here when I first moved in anyway so and then she walked back out she she said come on let's go and look at another room I said okay 
and she led me into the next room which is on the left which was the living room which is bigger than the bedroom and again I mean at the moment there's not a huge amount of stuff in there there's a couple of chairs there's a table or three tables two little tables one big table four bookcases five there's another bookcase there's five one little bookcase punch bag on the wall TV on the wall a lamp um, and then there's curtains and everything and there's lots of Andre's toys just everywhere all over the place so even with stuff in there the room is still fairly big like it looks quite big because I don't have stuff in the middle of the room I like space and the problem with having a settee is people I worry that someone might come and get comfortable I want to sit down for long periods of time so if you make it uncomfortable people don't want to stay <laughs> oh dear so I'm not really I'm kind of semi joking on that one so when I moved in there was nothing obviously the paint that would be really imagine if there was a punch bag on the wall I'd have been so happy but there wasn't there was nothing it was just plain walls they weren't particularly dirty they weren't they were just <clears throat> um, kind of just white walls a couple of them needed a, a paint but other than that no carpet again an excessive amount of paint on the on the um, floor real a lot and loads of nails sticking up so it's very echoey I don't think it's as echoey and I don't know what you think because I've moved from the hallway well I started off downstairs didn't I looking up the stairs walking up the stairs walking into the front door talking in the hallway for a bit walking into the bedroom talking in the bedroom then walking out back into the hallway and now I'm in the living room so I don't know if it sounds different in here to you um, but I do have a lot of soundproofing on the walls in here and as far as having stuff in here I do have bookcases but I've got a big shed in the other one so there's there is stuff to absorb the sound as far as in a bed and stuff like that so I hope that it's quieter a bit a bit a better quality sound when I'm in here that's why I hope but uh, you're gonna have to let me know because otherwise it means I've got to listen back and I don't want to do that so there's nothing on the floor and I was looking around and thinking okay hmm so I wasn't sure I'm just gonna have a little drink I wasn't really sure the last time that I kind of really had well this was the first time this is the first time I'd ever been in that position that's what I mean I've never been in a position to rent like a council flat I'd never had that opportunity and I really needed someone with me because I was finding it a bit uh, it wasn't extremely relaxing to be fair because just because I don't I didn't know what to look for does that make sense um, one thing I did notice is lots of plugs I've got two in the bedroom two double plugs in the bedroom I've got one double plug two two double plugs in the living room plus another two double plugs so there's four double plugs in the living room or plus plug sockets which is really good there's a satellite dish outside the window not the window on the wall outside as there is pretty much in every flat 
from previous tenants. And I didn't know what to look for. The only thing that I was looking for really from my own personal perspective was to make sure the place wasn't damp. I had no intention of living in a damp place because that's, that's one of the main reasons I moved. And another thing I was really probably in a sense more important than that is uh, quiet. Have somewhere that's quiet. But it's really difficult to establish the level of noise and sound that may be um, being presented to you just in that 20 minutes of looking around or 15 minutes or whatever it was. So it, was, it very much was a gamble. It was a gamble. If I'd have come in here and the, the walls were shaking because someone was playing bass music downstairs and the whole building was shaking, I'd have just laughed it off and said, see ya, get back to me when either those people have moved out or you've got another property. Because I would not live in a place with someone like that. Because it's just hell. So yeah, I don't want that. I've done it too many times in the past so I was looking at this again the window's really big I think it's exactly the same size as the other the other window the radiator is exactly the same size as the other radiator the only difference is on the right hand side there's a much bigger gap to the wall it just shows how much bigger the wall is it's a good I don't know, maybe four foot longer, maybe five, I don't know, something like that. So I'm, I like it. There's uh, still lots to do, but that's part of the fun because, you know, I know that when, when Andre, you know, goes to heaven in a few years time, Hopefully not for a long time, but when that happens, it's, you know, I'll get myself a decent carpet and things will change, like the flat will change. I'm never, I'm never going to get myself a dog and I can never replace Andre. So it will be, the place will look very different. There won't be paper on the floor for him to do his little uh, bits of business on. I won't have to hide things. <laughs> I won't have to keep... I'll be able to leave stuff on a table without having to move it because I know that it will knock it off. So it'll just change. The, the environment will change. But I'd prefer it to stay like this forever if he's with me, you know. But that's kind of obvious, isn't it, I suppose. But it will change over time. As will I. So... I looked at this place and I thought, I looked at this room and I thought, what a rubbish door. And she said, yeah, I think they found it in a skip in 1943. I said, oh, that's what I was thinking. You know what, if I ever make um, a really boring podcast specifically for to, to bore people, I might mention that one day. And she said, really? I said, what do you mean boring podcasts? I said, no, I said boring podcasts, not podcast. She said, that's what I said, podcasts. Don't make fun of the way I speak. I said, sorry, sorry. And she said, what was that about? I said, well, I might do, I do at the moment I do these sleep recordings. I've been doing it since 2006 and I do chronic pain relief and relaxation, and stop smoking and stuff like that. She said, okay. She said, I said, um, she said, what about, what are you talking about, the, the boring things then? Well, I said, well, some people say that when I do my Jason chats, which is a vlog, they say that I bore them to sleep. And they <laughs> fall asleep to me talking, even though I'm not actually trying to get them to sleep. And she said, oh, when did you start doing those Jason chats then? And I said, oh, about 2000, well, I think I named them Jason Chats in about 2011 or 10. 
but I was doing the, I used to call them update videos back in 2007. And she said, oh, so you've been doing them much longer than the, um, the podcasts that also do sleep, sleep recordings. I said, oh yeah, yeah, a lot longer. I said, oh, okay. So you've been doing it longer than the, um, that other podcast that does a boring podcast that someone online said that you'd copied them. I said, yeah, I was doing it a lot longer than him. I just didn't call it that. Oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> and she said, well, how do you know that you might do a boring podcast then one day? I said, I don't, I don't know. She said, so why do you mention it then? I said, well, I thought it might fit in with this recording I'm doing now. She said, you, said, you recording me? I said, look, only secretly. She said, oh, okay. As long as it's a secret. I said, yeah. We held hands for a little while and then we danced around. We made a little fire in the middle of the room, danced around. Only a little fire. But actually, it was a lighter. It was just a little lighter standing up. One of those ones that you can... Um, have light in or was it a candle yeah that's it that's what they're called isn't it candles so looking at this place and I'm thinking okay it's nice it's alright but it's grotty grotty in the sense of there's all these splatters of paint all over the floor it's almost like there was two cans of paint living here or there was one really really extremely frustrated male can of paint that lived here on his own and spent a lot of time on the internet you know I'm just saying that there was a lot of that stuff on the floor just and uh, a lot of paint so then she said do you want to see the kitchen I said yeah but can you why are you whispering she said I thought you'd like whispering I said, well, I said, I don't mind it. I said, she said, but you make whisper recordings, don't you? I said, yeah, how do you know about that? She said, uh, we always check out the Facebooks of people that might move in. We like to check you out. I said, that's not scary at all. And she said, well, should we look in the kitchen, shall we? I said, yeah, but can I just get a drink first? She said, what? I said, I'm just going to get a drink of Coke. And she said, you don't have a drink of Coke on you. I said, I know, but while I'm recording, I am. I want to record this in the future. She said, what? I said, don't worry. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the kitchen. She said, oh, okay, goody, goody. So I have to turn the light on because... It's night time, but on that day, it was bright day and the light was in the kitchen. So I have to pretend. In all fairness, it was much cleaner then than what it is now. It was, the floor was much cleaner, well, tidier. And so again, another, it's like the door from the skip just moves from doorway to doorway as I walk through the flat, just one door. So as I walked in, there's one of those big long lights, you know, the like the old fashioned kitchen lights with the is it a strobe light? I don't know the big, you know, the big long ones that almost look like uh, lightsabers. And on the floor, there's there's always been sticky, a little bit sticky tiles, black tiles. A little bit of patterning to go around the edge, you know, of the, of the floor. And straight ahead of me, there's a counter. And it's uh, it looks a bit marbly. It's not obviously, but it looks a bit marbly. It's got a nice pattern. And so that that was just empty at the moment. Now it's got a fridge on top and a microwave next to it. But that was empty. There was a gap underneath. And there was a little, a, a drawer and a cupboard 
on the right hand side but there was a gap underneath for the fridge or the freezer there's a freezer under there now but it was empty before then above the microwave now which was empty before well the microwave is empty now but you know what I mean the, there's a cupboard I'll open it up it's got some sliced peaches and some green giant originally um, sweet corn and some baked beans and some rice pudding as well so it's got stuff in there now but at the time there was nothing in there and then if you move along there was a gap which now has a cooker and there was the old uh, thing at the back and it gives you there's an electric thing which you can attach to it of course I could have had gas if I wanted as well could have chosen gas or electric for the cooker I chose electric and then moving along there's another um, I don't know top that goes along to the right there's not a lot of space really it's and then turning right there's the sink and the draining board a little bit of top that's you know empty and then there's the boiler on the right hand side on top so at the moment I've got a kettle toaster a um, what do you call it a steamer and a Breville toasted sandwich maker so that's that's on the top there I've also got some potatoes and some bananas but it was empty before there was no bananas before it was completely empty and then above that there's a cupboard which is probably three times as big as the other one and that's where I, I said at the moment I've got bread and tea and coffee and stuff like that in there but there was nothing in there at that time there wasn't really enough cupboard space in here for me but I'll make do I could do with more cupboard space um, but I just love complaining so it's okay and then above the sink area and the draining board area there's the window and again, it's a good size window. I don't know what a bad size window is. It's probably just an average size window with a windowsill underneath. And because there was no, in fact, I didn't change the, um, what's the thing you call it that you pull up and down? Not a zip. Um, I don't know, but you know, I forget what they're called, but that was already there. Um, but there was no neck curtain, so I put a neck curtain in there. I think my dad said, what do you want a neck curtain for? I said, oh, wait, I think he might have asked that. I said, because people can see in. I don't want people looking into my bedroom. No, no, not my bedroom, my kitchen. Or if I, I might decide to sleep in there. I might decide this is my bedroom and have the cooker in the bedroom and he said no you're not going to do that yeah I said no but if I wanted to I could he said you're not going to are you I said no might do though I said you're not that way I said yeah. Yeah. so it's quite bright in here and it is during the day it's you know there's no blocking there's no, there's, I think there's some trees but there's no, nothing really obstructing the light um, and then underneath the sink the sink especially under where the sink itself is there's another cupboard and to the right of it where the kettle is there's a cupboard and a, and a little drawer so there's storage in there but unfortunately we have the occasional mousy visit not much because Andre is uh, he's a pretty good guard for that stuff no one wants to come in here with him here but 
occasionally one gets uh, strays in here by accident and so I've had to kind of stop using those cupboards because I don't want to entice those little little buggers to come here and so then underneath next to that cupboard under the sink there's another big gap which is where I've got the washing machine now so that those are the things that I purchased when I first moved in um, the first things I got was the cooker the fridge and the washing machine those are the first three things that I bought um, before I even moved in because um, I needed, I can't, I didn't see any point moving in and not having anywhere to put my milk or, you know, and a washing machine. The, the, the nearest laundrette that I know of is in town and that's about, it's about, it's quite a few miles away. It's, it's a good, you know, maybe two hour walk if I was going to walk it, just give you an idea of the distance. But I could get a bus, but I'd, I didn't want to go, I didn't want to continue doing that. I've never liked laundrettes. And this was an opportunity to have my own washing machine for the first time ever. Never had my own washing machine before. Ironically, someone, one of the other neighbours, gave me a washing machine. Said, you can have our, ours, we've got a new one. You can have our one. And it didn't work. I was like... So I go, thanks. You know, I've got it all up here. Heaviest thing. Great. Oh, fridge just turned itself on. Heaviest thing I've ever lifted in my life. That's with help from another person. The washing machine. And it still didn't work. But luckily, so I went and bought a new one. They replaced it. So they took the old one away. Which is so good. So grateful. So, oh, thank you. Um... I offered, I offered the people if they wanted some hot chocolate to drink, but they they said they had other things to do. Um, I said, "Are you sure?" I said, "Well, we like you as a friend, but don't don't really want any more thing to do with you. Just would like you just if you can just sign the documents and we'll we'll be on our way." I said, oh, "Okay, fair enough." Are you sure you don't want to sort of do something at the weekend? I said, "No, no, we don't." Oh, okay, and uh, then. On the right hand side there was it's a small radiator and I've got a little um, clothes basket-y thing in front of it I've also uh, my dad put up he, he helped him put some stuff up for me so there's a, a rail uh, a, a, I don't know, like a towel rack on the wall above the radiator here he put that up for me and on top of that, I've got leaning a big whiteboard where you can write stuff on it. And, uh, and next to that, there was nothing here at all. It was just empty for ages. And then probably a year or two in, probably two years in, I bought a freezer. It's one of those like small, you know, the top, the top, the lid up. You pull the lid up at the top, unlike the ones with the trays and stuff with the lid at the front. Uh, I think they're, they're chest freezers or whatever they call them. It's not big, but it's definitely big enough for me. It's so I've basically got two freezers, which means I've got easily enough space to store my stuff. I would quite like a bigger fridge. Because at times it just not I don't really hold the amount of stuff I need, and there is space to have a bigger fridge there, like a wider fridge and maybe a bit taller. So there is a possibility of doing that maybe in the future, but at the, at the moment it's absolutely fine. But before there was no freezer in there, well, it wasn't there was nothing in there, and it was. I can put my arms straight out and twirl around like Wonder Woman. 
And in fact, I have to do it really slowly, obviously, because I don't want to turn into Wonder Woman. But I don't, my hands don't touch any of the, the sides of the walls or anything. It all depends what I do. Obviously, if I do it right next to the wall, my hands touch the wall. But if I stand in the middle, so it's, it's an okay size, but I suppose if I was very, if I was very tactical, I could have uh, a table, like a breakfast table in here, maybe one that folded down from the wall and I could eat my breakfast in here. And I could also have a television on the wall. You know, if I kind of wanted to sort of do that, because I've got two walls where there's nothing on there. And another one above the, the cooker, which has got nothing on it as well. So there's plenty of space on the wall for stuff. But I don't feel the need to sit in the kitchen, you know? And plus now I've got the freezer, there is no room. But again, if I was, if I wanted to, I could move stuff into the storage room and have freezers and stuff like that in there. But I think it's handy to be able to have to be able to like stick your hand in and just reach in and pull something out and you know, it's it's there, the cooker's there, the microwave's there. Not like walking around looking for stuff. So yeah. So that this is and I've got a bin as well. That wasn't there before. So the bins, it's usually placed against the wall. It's a new bin, because the other one broke. I've gone through three bins since I've lived here. Andre kept knocking over the first one. And the second one I bought, it was metal. And I think that broke. Then I bought another one that was metal, and that broke. I purposely bought it so that he couldn't knock it over. I got a heavy one. And I bought this one and it's 50 litre pedal bin. Still got the sticker on. And I don't have to touch the lid, so it's got a little thing at the bottom that I can press to open the lid. And it's just perfect because it's just heavy enough that he can't knock it over. But he does slide it across the floor. So he, you know, he goes against the wall and he pushes it, tries to knock it over, but he can't because it's just too big, which is good. And she said, well, if you stop talking about the bin, I can be able to show you the, the bathroom. I said, all right. So you're getting impatient with me. So we went into the bathroom, which is basically coming out of the door, turn left. Oh, there's that door again. And turn left, and of course this is going to be a bit echoey because bathrooms are. And there's this, I don't know what, like pale, pasty, um, pinky kind of line, lino stuff on the floor. I mean, there's some other colours there as well, but it's, I'll, I'll give you an idea how big it is or... So if I take, if I'm walking out of here, this is how long it takes me to get to the sink. So it's like one, two, three, four steps and I'm at the sink. I'm at the, four steps, I'm at the sink. Turn left, one step, I'm at the sink. <laughs> so the toilet's right next to the sink. The bathroom, the bath rather, is, it's not a huge bath. You might think, well, sure, it's got to be huge if you fit in it, Jason. No, stop being, stop it. It's, it's okay. Luckily, I'm not very tall, so, it, but even I can't really kind of lay down and be completely covered. But it's okay. It does the trick for me. I'm never going to get any taller. And so it's okay. It's, and there's a shower. Um, on the wall but I've got no shower curtain because I lent that to my friend and there's a hot and cold tap so that was how it was when I moved in this was here and there's uh, a windowsill the toilets were white 
and the sink was white. I'm not saying it's not white now. I'm just saying that that's the colour of, of the... <laughs> it's that kind of... I mean, you can get different colour sinks, can't you? get blue ones, green ones, pink ones. This just happens to be a white one because it's been there since 1932. And above the sink and the toilet, you know, there's just not a lot separating the two, to be fair. There's a um, shelf, which is tiled, and then there's a window. Again, it's quite big. It's about seven foot high, but the window doesn't start um, until, well, the window sills around about my navel, just above my belly button. Above the bathroom, above the bath rather, on one, two, three walls, you know, the whole thing is tiled with white tiles. Well, whitish tiles with a few weird hairs on there. I don't remember them being there when I moved in. To the left of the window, there's a vent. You know one of those ones that you pull on the string and it lets the air out, or lets just the, the smoky, dusty, pong, whatever, you know, from the bath. So that's on. It's always on, but it, it give it, when I actually turn it on, it gets a proper big, uh, gets energized, I'm not sure what it really does. It gets very dusty. But I'm very careful because I don't want any moist or any damp in here at all. I'll, I'll have all the windows open 24 hours a day if I have to. I'm not having any, any damp, no, 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 never. Now, as I turn, so the toilet's there, if I turn towards the other wall, which is opposite the bath, and there's a radiator and also that's where the water there's a thing up underneath which turns the water on and off there's like a water meter there there wasn't anything else there but my dad put a rail on there for my towel everywhere we go he just puts ta honestly wherever we go my dad he's, he's just walking he's got nothing on him he's got a jacket maybe some gloves if it's cold and I be talking to him and I go to walk away and suddenly there's a towel rack on the wall. Honestly, everywhere, restaurants, weddings, it just, I don't know where they come from. It's like the magic towel rack creator. Because everywhere he goes, there's a towel rack. Just, it's on the wall near where he is. And people say, how did that towel rack get there? And my dad says, uh -huh. and he walks away. So I don't know where they come from. I mean, I've got that towel rack, I've got the other towel rack in the bathroom, one in the kitchen. Um, well, okay, there's only two, but you know. Just as an example. Above that, there's a, a bathroom cabinet. I could have just said cabinet. And it's in the bathroom, isn't it? I mean, it could be a cabinet, you could have it anywhere doesn't have to be in the bathroom but it is in the bathroom and even if it wasn't made for the bathroom you'd call it a bathroom cabinet because it's the cabinet and if it was in the bathroom cabinet if you was actually in, imagine if you were in a bath and you had someone in there with you and you said oh can you just pass me can you pass me the nail clippers please darling and you said oh, where are they honey Oh, sweetheart, they're over there in the, the cabinet. Oh, well, what's wrong, honey? I can't find them. I can't find, what, what, where, where's the cabinet? Like the bathroom cabinet. Oh, okay. Oh, I found it and open, like the only cabinet in the room. So, but that wasn't there when I first moved in, but it is now. And then something that also surprised me, apart from the fact that the door was here, the door was following me around, is there's another door with a mirror on, which is direct as you walk in there on the left hand side. And open it up, and it's another storage room. Not 
not to the same sort of uh, level as the other storage room because you can't walk into this one but there's one two three shelves and a big I suppose originally it would have been an airing cupboard but it's a nice you know you could well depending I suppose you could kind of fit loads of clothes in there or you know it's I haven't, I use it for storing deodorant and water bottles and, you know, just uh, goods, you know, stuff that I use, like toilet, toilet paper. I don't like to say that out loud because I know not everyone uses toilet paper. I know there's not many people that, you know, go to the toilet, but I'm one of them. And, uh, but yeah, it's, I've got this quite a few bits in there and it's a big it's right from the the, the floor to the ceiling which as I said is probably about 8 foot plus 5, 6, 7 yeah probably about 8 foot and it's quite deep as well so that was there it's like wow plus plus there's an attic in here which I could store stuff if I wanted to. I don't, but I could. And it was like, wow. Wow. So there you go. That is, and the mirror, I still use the mirror. The um, bathroom cabinet, the cabinets in the bathroom, also has two mirrors on. They're little ones, but I do look into them. So I've got one, two, four mirrors in the building, in the flat. And I suppose the one I use most, so when I'm in the bathroom, would be the one that's on the door, the big one, because it's it starts around, it starts about a willy level and goes up to just above my head. Yeah, probably yeah, probably about the top of my head, maybe a little bit higher. So it's just thinking it doesn't fill the width of me because it, cause it doesn't does it can't contain my girth. But it's if I step back, I can see you know myself. And then as I go in and out of the of the flat, I check in the mirror for bogies and you know make sure. I haven't got food in my beard and stuff like that. No whipped cream in my hair. You know, just general stuff. Um, so that, yeah. So that, that, my dear old friends, as I move into the living room, you can, I wonder if you can hear the difference. I can feel the difference. It's quieter. So this is basically that was the, the the tour we then went into the kitchen and she said so do you want it are you going to take it I said what she said are you going to take it I said do you expect me to choose now like right this moment she said no I can um, leave, you can leave it until 2 o'clock this afternoon if you want but I need to know by then and I've got two other people to, to show the flat to one's waiting outside now and they actually, the person phoned her. Just as she said that, there's someone going to be waiting outside. And they phoned and she, and she said, wait a minute, you have to wait. I'm still with the first person who's got first dibs. And that that was almost like the a sales pitch. And I said, yeah, okay, I'll take it. Partly because I didn't think it was fair, someone else looking at it and getting their hopes up and then not getting it because I, I chose to take it it just seemed because I wouldn't I've had that happen to me in the past with rooms just looked at a room thought I had somewhere to live and then someone else looked at it and they gave it to them and I said yeah I'll take it and the lady phoned up the person downstairs saying no go away well she didn't say it said so he's, he's taking it and I had to sign paperwork, got told to go and collect the keys on whatever day, in a couple of days' time, and I had to fill in some more paperwork there. 
And she said, well, congratulations, you've got a flat for life now. You've got a home for life. And I was like, I was excited, but it was in the middle of nowhere. I mean, literally, there's nothing here. There's, there's a garage, which is like a 15-minute walk. And then the closest shops are about 25-minute walk away. Going down a busy, mo- like, really, really busy road. So it's like, oh. It's a bit, it's not. But the flat itself is lovely. Plus I'm here. So, <laughs> and um, when I went downstairs, I said, okay, thank you. I sh- you know, took the paperwork with me. And uh, I saw that, I think it was a lady who was downstairs waiting to, she was still there. I think she wanted to see the the council lady. And I said, I'm so sorry, I've taken it. And she said, yeah, I know the lady's already told me. I said, I'm really sorry. And, you know, just, I feel bad. It's like, but I think in a sense it would have been better, better than her having looked around and, you know, started imagining what it would be like to live here and everything and then be told that I'd taken it. So I almost took it because of the lady waiting outside. I mean, I'm I'm sure I would have taken it anyway. But the ironic thing is just before this flat came up, a couple of weeks before, I was told I had another flat and it was in the same town as my dad and my family. And they said I was at the top of the list. I just had to go and see it. And I was waiting to hear about it and they said there's been some problems with it. I said, okay. And then I thought I'd lost it. And then this one came along, I took it. Two weeks later, after I've moved in here, maybe a week even, I got a phone call saying, so if you want to come and have a look at this flat in, in I say the near, say the town there, if you want to come and have a look at this town in this flat, this town in this flat uh, that was near my dad. And I said, I thought it'd gone. They said, no, no, it was just, it needed um, building work done. You know, some res- renovations or something. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, I don't think the doors were wide enough for your belly. I said, what? He said, yeah, yeah, we've heard about you. I said, that's just rude. He said, well, wow, don't matter. You've got nothing you can do. You don't know who I am, do you? I said, well, yeah, you're the person from the housing. She said, what's my name, though? I said, I don't know. She said, there, see? I said, well, aren't the calls recorded? She said, no, no, I'm making this call from my mobile phone and I'm sitting on the toilet. <laughs> you can't trace it. And I've done, I've done uh, anonymous call as well, so you can't. We've held my number. I said, that's a lot of energy you put into that. She said, you think that's a lot of energy? You should see inside the toilet. I said, no, that's just... Ugh. And she said, okay, so you don't want it. I said, well, I do want it. But... What do I do? Can I swap? And she said, nope. So I ended up here, because I'd already signed the agreement and everything, and the flat that I wanted, where it was, because I wanted to be closer to my family, I thought with my brother and sister, nieces, and where well, four now, there's, what was it? Three nieces, no, three nieces and one, one uh, nephew. And, but yeah, so, that's the story of me getting this flat with some visuals well some verbal visuals of the whole interaction of me well some are obviously made up it wasn't the same door following me they did have a different door in each doorway and we didn't hold hands but you know the whole that was kind of the tour that I had I mean, I was a little bit worried when she said, I want to take you on a tour. And I thought, oh my God, God, I've been reading the newspapers. I live in a military town. So I don't want to go on tour. I'm not trained. She said, no, I just want to show you the the flat. I just want to show you the, the, the rooms. I said, oh, whew. thank goodness for that. And that was it. That was the whole thing. So I'm going to leave you. And I'm going to go. And I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Thank you for listening. 
and remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.